Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be discussing the apt package manager. The apt package manager, APT, stands for the advanced package tool. It is the package manager in Debian and Ubuntu and pretty much most distros based on Debian and Ubuntu. I'm reading a quick blurb that I pulled down from Wikipedia. Apt is a user interface that works with core libraries to handle the installation and removal of software on Debian, Ubuntu, and other Linux distributions. Apt simplifies the process of managing software on your system by automating the retrieval, configuration, and installation of software packages, either from pre-compiled files or by compiling source code. So basically, a package manager, in this case the Apt package manager, it helps you install software, remove software, and update your system. That is the main things you would use the apt package manager for. Let me show you how to use apt. So I've pulled up a terminal here. Today I'm running Seduction. Seduction is a Debian based Linux distribution. It is based on Debian's unstable branch and of being a Debian based distribution it will use the apt package manager. All the commands I show you today should work in any Debian or Ubuntu based distribution. Any recent one that is in anything that's uh you know not older than about two or three years, that all these commands should work. So the first thing you would probably want to do with apt is install a program, just a package. So assuming you know the package name, sudo apt install package, where the package is actually the name of a package. Uh, I'm just gonna pick one. sudo apt install uh htop. I think htop is already installed on the system, but whether it is or not, I'm going to run it. Of course, you always have to give a root password when you install or remove software. Anytime you make changes to the system, it will require a password. And it it is upgrading htop. So htop was already installed, but it's upgrading to the, the newest version. We have a little progress bar here at the bottom, progress 50%. Now the uh, command I typed, sudo apt install name of program. Uh, I used sudo um, in Debian and a lot of Debian based distros. Uh, sudo is not actually installed on the system unless you choose to install it yourself and add your user to the sudoers list. So what you would have to do is you need to open a root terminal or just open up any terminal and type the command SU which stands for super user. You type SU, you type your password, your root password, and now you are the root user and now instead of typing sudo apt install htop, you would just simply type apt install htop because you're already root, you don't need to invoke sudo. And htop has finished installing. Let me clear the screen here so we just showed you sudo apt install the name of a program we could also sudo apt remove the name of a program in this case I'm gonna remove htop and it's gonna remove htop alright and htop is gone boom we just blew it away so we just showed you how to install a package and remove a package with the apt package manager, sudo apt install, name of program, sudo apt remove, name of program. Uh, probably the most common thing you will want to do using the apt package manager is update your system. How do you do that? Well, first you have to update your sources list. So you type the command sudo apt update. Hit enter. And you may be asked for a password. Uh, we didn't have to type our root password because I had already typed my root password previously. All right, and it has updated our sources list. After you do sudo apt update, run the command sudo apt upgrade. And this will update all the packages on your system that have an update available. In this case, because I'm running a rolling release distro, Seduction, and I haven't updated it in, I don't know, probably three weeks, there are a million packages to update. I'm not going to run this update on camera, this upgrade. 
Uh, 448 packages need to be upgraded. I'm going to choose no here and decline to take this upgrade. Now when I showed you how to install and remove software with sudo apt install name of program, sudo apt remove name of program, it assumes that you know the name of the program. Uh, but say you're not exactly sure what the name of the program is, apt does have a search feature and you don't need to be super user to actually search. So apt search and then the name of some program. How about Firefox? That's probably a bad one to search for because there's going to be a million packages that uh, are involved with Firefox in some way. It's going to be a very long list. But anyway, that's how the search function is used. apt search name of package. Another uh, interesting apt command is apt show name of package. So I've got Firefox already installed on this system. apt show Firefox. And it spits out a bunch of information about Firefox. It gives me uh, the source, the maintainer, install size. It gives me all of Firefox's dependencies. And it gives me uh, suggestions, I guess recommended packages for Firefox. Um, gives me download size, apt sources, and man page description. So that is apt show name of program. We need to talk about removing packages. Uh, sudo apt remove package is the usual way you want to remove packages, but that all that does is remove that one package. So when I did sudo apt remove htop, it removed htop, but it did not remove any of the config files for htop. Say I had a custom configuration file set up for htop, uh, you know that you know various colors and settings. Uh, even though htop is not that configurable, but say something like Vim that you can that has a config file and you customize it and you get it set the way you want. And then I sudo apt remove Vim. Well, it removes Vim from my system, but all my configuration files for Vim still live on my system, which means the next time I install or reinstall Vim, my old config files are already there. I don't have to go through the trouble of reconfiguring Vim the way I want it because those configuration files are still there. But say you want all the files removed. You want all the configuration files and everything removed. Instead of remove, you use purge. sudo apt purge name of pro program. So in my case, Vim in this example, sudo apt purge Vim will completely blow away Vim and all it, of the uh, configuration files for Vim. Another useful command that you probably want to run, you know, at least a couple of times a year is the auto remove command. <clears throat> auto remove, uh, basically on your system, there will be packages that are no longer needed. Uh, most of them are going to be like old Linux headers that are no longer needed, uh, packages that were uh, dependencies of other programs that you've already re removed for your, from your system, so they're no longer needed. So occasionally you want to run sudo apt auto remove. And I don't have anything to remove on mine, but on your system you probably will have a dozen or so things that will need to be removed. Basically it just cleans out some of these unused packages that are just sitting on your system, uh, basically taking up disk space. And the last thing I'll leave you with, this is really f kind of an advanced thing. Uh, you will almost never ever need to use this, but if you do, uh, sudo apt edit dash sources allows you to edit your sources list. It opens in your default text editor on this system. Nano is the default text editor. On some systems it may be Vim or some other terminal or text-based text editor. And this is our slash etsy slash apt slash sources dot list file. I'm not going to play around with it. I recommend you guys never play around with this file. But for advanced users, it's there. Now if you have any questions at all about the apt package manager, uh, questions that I didn't answer in this video, just like any other Linux program, you just fire up a terminal, type the command man, M-A-N, man, and then the name of the program. In my case, apt, man, apt. This opens the man page for apt, the manual page. The man page for apt uh, basically is your instruction manual. It lists every 
command, every flag, everything you can do with apt. It's all right here. And it's not a very long man page. Uh, I scroll down a couple of times and, you know, you've got it all here well laid out. So I would uh, suggest you guys read this. It takes you all of two minutes to read the man page for apt. All right, and that is basically the apt package manager. That is a very brief overview of the apt package manager, the command line interface to it anyway. Uh, I know a lot of you guys really are not wanting to play around in the terminal. You guys uh, avoid the terminal, but really, once you learn a few commands, uh, it is so much easier to install and remove software uh, through the command line using apt. Also, updating your system is so much easier. You just quickly open a terminal, especially if you have your terminal hotkeyed to some key binding. You just hit that key binding, boom, a terminal pops up. Quickly type sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. Your system is updated. Instead of going through some menu system, trying to find your GUI package manager, uh, opening it, opening that GUI package manager, typing in your root password into that package manager, then navigating some system of menus or buttons to get to wherever it finally says up, update the system. You click OK. You know, I'm already done updating my system by the time you guys are, are even getting started with your GUI package managers. So really, learning the command line saves you time with updating your system, installing and removing software. But for those of you that want a GUI front end to the apt package manager, in Debian and Ubuntu-based systems, the Synaptic package manager is probably the one that you want to go with. It is a very nice graphical package manager. So open a terminal and sudo apt install Synaptic and you will have the Synaptic Package Manager installed on your system, a nice graphical front end to apt. I hope you guys found this review of the apt package manager useful. Peace, guys.